So a lot of people enjoyed one of my latest videos on Pal World and PC Gamer's absolutely ridiculous review for it. And it got me thinking, maybe I should just actually start reading PC Gamer. I know it's unthinkable in 2024 to read legacy media like that, but uh, for content, it actually is quite amusing to just read the things they say. Don't do it. But part of me was thinking, hey, that's got to be a one-off. The quality of their journalism isn't always as bad as that Paul World review. That was just like a response to a, con a game that s inspired a lot of controversy on stuff like Twitter, right? It's not always going to be that way. So I, I read their last Epoch review. Let's get into it. So uh, the, the uh, writer here summarizes Last Epoch as an action RPG for people who aren't that fussed about action, which is a very, very weird critique. Um, for a second now, let's just pause as I put up some of the footage of me fighting the last boss that I fought before the server is crashed once again. And uh, see if you if you think I'm not being fussed about the action here. Now keep in mind, this is a publication that gave Diablo 8.5 out of 10 rather than 6 out of 10. So they must really think that Diablo is a really action-packed game. But I'm sure this reviewer will justify their points and show that they really did play the game and are knowledgeable about both the game itself and ARPGs as we continue, right? That, that's going to happen? Let's get into the article. So they start off by saying the first thing most people hear about Last Epoch is that it's an action RPG with a clever trading system. And that's true. It does have smart mechanics for bartering gear and ranking up your affiliation with the Merchant's Guild to equip better purchase goods, which prevents you from making some canny deals and immediately walking off at in-game armor. But one thing that's really clever is that you can opt out entirely. Well, that's not a clever trading system then. That's the developers doing the right thing that... RPG fans have asked for for a long time, which is allowing a solo self-found players to have higher drop rates without needing to opt in to the trading system. Otherwise, they wouldn't be solo self-found. And I don't know why the Merchant's Guild is stopping people from walking off immediately in in-game armor. I have never played an ARPG that allows me to immediately make some canny trades and walk off in in-game armor. I, I, I it, Comment down below if this makes sense to you, but of the modern ARPGs that exist, I have never made a canny trade and immediately walked off in endgame armor because that's not how economics works. The reviewer then goes on to say, as someone who could not care less about auction houses and RPGs, this is ideal. I'm not here to play the medieval stock market and feeling forced into one to keep up in a game like Lost Ark sucks. Not a very good sentence. Um... Right, fine, so you like playing solo self-found. Well, most people don't. It's great that they're supporting that niche, but again, I, I fail to see how this gives makes the game have an interesting trading system. What you're talking about is being locked out of the trading system by the game allowing you to play solo self-found, which is good, but that's not having an interesting trading system. That's allowing player choice, which is how you should phrase that and make that idea intelligible. The way it's being described here makes virtually no sense. So the writer rambles on about how good their support for Solo Self-Found is without ever mentioning that it is Solo Self-Found or how Solo Self-Found works or even why they really prefer that playstyle other than the fact they really hate auction houses. I don't know what auction house they hate other than the one in Lost Ark, which they mentioned, because since the fall of the Diablo 3 auction house, most ARPGs don't have auction houses these days. And it's somewhat debatable in my mind whether Lost Ark was an action RPG. I consider it more of an MMORPG. But anyways, my pedantry aside, let's move on. They then go on to say, When a skeleton takes damage in Last Epoch, they flinch by calmly stretching their shoulders back like they're enjoying a leisurely yawn. When I fire a glowing magic arrow or swinging blade that cracks with lightning, it often looks like I've minorly inconvenienced my target. It makes me miss the dramatic clang and spray of blood when you hit a zombie in Grim Dawn? There's no oomph for impact? I literally just finished playing Grim Dawn because the servers on Last Epoch are not up at the moment, at least for me in Europe. And this is obviously just false. Uh, that's complete nostalgia. Yeah, Grim Dawn has more blood. But in terms of animations and impact, Grim Dawn was a super small indie game that had really, really primitive animations. A fun game nonetheless. But to say that Last Epoch has worse hit animations than Grim Dawn? 
is mind-blowingly just wrong. I mean, you can just you can compare the animations. They're more responsive. I mean, I've been critical of various features of Last Epoch, but criticizing its hit animations is just so weird. They continue, Meanwhile, my rogue's effort grunts. When using abilities are so loud and pained, I often check my health because I used her dash or something only to see I'm completely unhurt. Oh my God, this sentence. These people are journalists. Good God. Anyways, um, I don't agree with that. I think the player feedback on the game is perfectly fine. I have no idea how someone that's played Grim Dawn or Titan Quest could think that the player feedback in Last Epoch is bad. Um, it's it just objectively nostalgizing those games. I love those games, by the way. Uh, but the player feedback in Last Epoch is is better than than those two games. Um, you can you can do that objectively. Check the sound feedback from abilities and look at the animations. They're just clearer in Last Epoch. Sorry, wrong. Um, and obviously, I think this writer has started off with the idea that Last Epoch is boring and Diablo 4 is great. Notice they don't mention or defend Diablo 4, but it's sort of implicit because PC Gamer have been shilling for Diablo 4 for a while now. Um, they then go on to criticize the game's um, map and time and storyline, which frankly, I don't care about the storyline in ARPG. But one of the things that's shocking to me, having read the entire review now, is that the writer goes in no point in the essay, article, whatever, to justify the actual claim in the title that Les Epoch uh, is bad for people who aren't fussed, or is for people that aren't fussed about action. It, uh, it makes zero sense. I used to mark essays at one of Yale's sister universities. And if I had gotten this as an essay, despite the fact that the prose is moderately acceptable, you don't start with a claim and then do no effort to back it up within the body of the text. And that's what this writer said. They haven't showed the combat in the last epoch's bad. They've just talked about how uh, the crafting system is novel. Uh, uh, um, the combat I don't like. I liked Grim Dawn more. And uh, then they've gone on to uh, criticize the story a little bit and just move on. I mean, it's like an 800 word essay. They probably got, given what journalists get paid for this stuff, like 20 quid, and that's move, they, they move on. But the, the quality of the game journalism is just terrible. It, it really is. So, Here's my like very brief rebuttal. Um, I've already gone into it a bit. Look, I've been critical of Last Epoch because I think the servers are bad. And I think the servers are going to continue to be bad for the foreseeable future. That's one thing. But in terms of gameplay, the idea that you give Diablo an 8.5 and you give Last Epoch a 6 out of 10 is mind-blowingly corrupt. And we know why they do it. We know they are already coming at the game saying it's a small indie studio with 50 people. We don't care what our industry contacts with them are like. Whereas with Diablo... And we, there's, we also have to keep the Diablo fans happy because the Diablo dads, man, when they get mad at you, uh, that's that's another thing you don't want. Nowhere in the review does the review actually try and justify that the game is bad other than some vague things in, regarding um, input response. And that is, first of all, incredibly subjective. And B, if you're going to cite Grim Dawn as a paradigm of input response, you lo I lose any faith in you. I love Grim Dawn. I like the Titan Quest games. I like, oh my God, I can't remember the game studio, what they produce. But their games are notoriously swooshy, if you know what I mean. If you've played a lot of Grim Dawn and Titan Quest, they're kind of swooshy. Uh, that's the best word I can come with it. I, I don't feel that at all from Last Epoch. And uh, I think we can prove that just by looking at the combat in this. And I'll put up some combat from Grim Dawn in the background of this video. And I'll let you judge for yourself. But another day where gaming journalists are clowning on themselves, trying to please AAA developers and attack at small indie devs. Uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, this is going to be a regular series on the channel. You know, when you're a small YouTuber trying to find that series that, that you enjoy making and that other people enjoy watching, this is going to be a series on this channel where we just clown on gaming journalists and the absolutely rubbish things they say. And I'll see you in the next video.